Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, again, I apologize. There was no video last night. Uh, my son had a basketball game. Just It ran too late. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, end of the week. Um, so let, let's talk about the tape. So this morning, you know what? We obviously kicked off uh, earnings season. Uh, JP Morgan and the rest of the banks started reporting. You know, not great numbers. You know, you're hearing um, a lot of negative talk, realistic talk, recession, uh, all that stuff, transitory, blah, 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 all that good stuff, all that Fed jargon that kind of fills our brains with with emptiness and a lot of things to think about that we can't control, right? A lot of things are going to really um, put us in a situation to, to benefit throughout the day, right? Um, so that happened, right? The most important part was, um, from our point of view, uh, the world that we trade on is the NASDAQ 100. Again, what happened last Friday was the rejection of the 50-day moving average. And what happened for the next you know, five days uh, going into tomorrow, you have five consecutive days of lower highs, right? One, two, three, four, five, lower highs and lower lows. Now, usually I would turn around and be like, well, what, have, what has changed? Right. What, what has changed? What is going, you know, what is going into tomorrow? What's making you feel really, really good tomorrow that we can possibly rally? Give me a really good reason. I actually have one. Right. I actually do have one. If you look at the scoreboard today, nothing. Right. The Nasdaq up three points. Uh, the Dow was down. The S&P was down. How much was the Dow was down? 140. Uh, S&P was down 11 and the Nasdaq was up three bucks, right? So three points. And again, you turn around and say, well, what, it, what are you possibly seeing for tomorrow's session that could possibly have a rally, right? And the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. How could I convince myself, right? Before you can try to convince others, you got to try to convince yourself what you see. And here's kind of like where we play, let's look at things a little bit different or play devil's advocate. On the surface, absolutely. Five days in a row, lower highs, lower lows is not a good thing. Here's where things get interesting. If you guys remember yesterday, we gapped down a lot, right? A lot. And, you know, NASDAQ was down, what, three, 300 points yesterday? And it went green, right? To finish a little bit red, but it went green. Fast forward to today, you had, you know, the, the numbers come out from the brokers and they were bad as well. NASDAQ was down 2% today. And just like yesterday, they bought the dip. Once is okay, you got lucky. Twice, hey, maybe there's something going on here. And you know, again, I'm not trying to figure out where the market's gonna be next week or next month or you know, Christmas of 2093. I don't know, I'm not that smart. And believe me, I am that dumb. But the one thing we do try to control every single day is our intake, right? Is our intake of data and see what's strong, what's weak, what is the market telling us? And although, again, and again, this is a very important point, until we get finally above the 50-day moving average, risk is off overnight, right? Because again, we're underneath supply. Why would you possibly buy and hold something in, in overnight if there's supply up ahead? But again, this is the number. We already know this 296.75. It's going to be a big number going forward. But the reason why I'm getting a little bit of a little bit of hope for the bulls tomorrow is kind of the two things we just talked about. Number one, we bought, well, they bought the dip back to back days. Yesterday was a shot going green. They didn't get quite there. Today, down 2% at the open. They went green on a day, right? Q's went green on a day. And when you start looking at data, and this is where we talk about data, 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 this is where we kind of get our fix or at least our opinion for tomorrow. So we had these two events happen back to back days and the leaders of the market, right? Think about the leaders of the market, the biggest weight on the market, and that is semiconductors, and that is Apple, right? And that is Microsoft, right? And all those good things that make up the NASDAQ 100, they started getting very aggressive towards that dip and went green on the day. 
And when you start looking at charts today, right? And I said to myself, well, how many good possible charts, even if this is, a, even if we do have an update tomorrow, right? And the market kind of rallies tomorrow, whatever the case would be, how many charts could we possibly look good? I mean, it's just, right, it's, it's impossible. We've been down five days in a row, lower highs and lower lows. But then when you start digging and actually doing your research and actually looking at charts, you're going to see some pretty good ones. Um, and this is kind of where, you know, I'm preparing tomorrow as, hey, I got some long setups that I'm definitely watching. Look in the video, right? Look in the video. And the video is definitely one of the members of the, the NASDAQ 100, especially semiconductor groups that has a lot of juice. Again, nobody's saying this is the bottom of the video. It's going to rally. But for a tradable move, you can see here three times it's got rejected on this upper band here, right? The five-day moving average for all you guys who are joining us here for the first time, the five-day represents the short-term sentiment. So if it starts building above the short-term sentiment, why can't this put up a four or $5 move, right? Look at Apple, really nice move today, very strong move today out of the bottom channel here. And if this thing confirms this whole channel here, why can't Apple start going into the 150, 152 area? Again, nobody's saying this is the bottom of the market. Hell, I don't even know if the market's actually gonna go up tomorrow. But all we do, we can't control price action, we can just prepare. So Apple looks really, really good. Take a name like Qualcomm today. It absolutely went bananas today, right? Absolutely went nuts, confirmed the 50-day moving average and traded all the way into the top of the chain here. If it can control this channel and start building it up, why can't this thing go to 145, 148 tomorrow? So it's one of those scenarios of nobody's calling for a bottom. We're still down five days in a row, lower highs, lower lows. But if there's going to be a day that we do rally, right? There are some pretty damn good charts out there. Look at Boeing, right? Boeing is literally one day away of reclaiming the high from two days ago. And if it does, man, this thing could go to 156, 158. This thing looks really good. And in case you've been paying attention, there's a little chart out there, right? It's not gonna be obvious to a lot of people. Again, you know, unfortunately, most traders uh, they look at the top and they look at the bottom for the ranges. There's something called the sneaky, right? We hear me all the time talk about sneaky pivot. Now, again, I'm not going to give you a symbol for this for this stock. You got to do your own due diligence. Hush, hush information. But look at the 60 minute view on this thing. Forget it, this is a bad wick, right? Look at the 60 minute view. If this, if this channel comes out here, right, and this thing confirms this whole channel right here for tomorrow, why can't this thing wake up? And by the way, it's sitting right on the 50-day moving average. So if this channel does confirm, not only is it going to confirm this 60-minute channel, it might confirm the 50-day moving average. Nothing more bullish than that. But again, this is top secret. I, I, can't, I can't share the symbol with you. Please stop trying and don't ask anymore. So that's my point, right? That's my point. There's, there's a lot of things on the docket tomorrow that if we can trap some bears, right? I think that's the best way of saying it. If they can trap some bears at the open, especially give a kind of a fake washout and start getting above the, the previous day's range, okay? It could do, you know, we could have a potentially pretty good session tomorrow, but there's a lot of contingency, right? There's a lot of, so far this is all, hope and pray and hopefully that you know everything works out but don't we have to at least be prepared for it right even if it doesn't happen don't at least we have to be prepared based on tonight's research and what i'm seeing it does look pretty good at least pretty promising uh tomorrow at the open and, and look at again look at the semiconductors guys look at the smhs the semiconductors closed above the 20-day moving average today if we confirm tomorrow again big if but if we can confirm tomorrow, why can't we put in a day two rally? That's my point. We are set up for tomorrow. I think if the bulls want to rally, at least for tomorrow, okay, if the bulls want to rally, I don't see a better situation than we can just previously outline. And there's bet no better setups for the entire week that we've seen tonight going into this pro going into tomorrow from the previous five days. Everything else was sell by a sell by a sell by so if the market's going to rally, right, at any time, I think we're, we have a pretty good case of rallying tomorrow. Is it going to happen? We don't know, but we're going to prepare for it. In case it doesn't, look at NVAX, right? Look at NVAX, uh, big, big reversal today. Same thing with Moderna, closed right on the 50-day, just like the other symbol, which I won't talk about. If this thing confirms the 50-day, the same way it's good confirming the 50-day, the same day is bad confirming the 50-day. Look at Moderna as well. 
right? Look at Moderna as well. Did exactly the same thing. Big, big move down. Not quite to the 50-day moving average, but the same thing as well. Apparently, COVID is over. That's it. You can tongue kiss everybody and lick fire poles and benches as much as you want. So there you have it. So going into tomorrow, I'm hope spring's eternal or maybe home, uh, hope summer's eternal, whatever the case may be. Again, guys, remember, it's okay to be wrong. But plan for the day, right? Have an opinion. Let that opinion play out technically. Don't hope, don't anticipate. As much as everything looks great, at the end of the day, keep this in mind, we are still underneath supply. We haven't even taken out the previous day's highs yet. But again, if you're looking for a silver lining, this is it. And if this starts confirming, everything will start confirming in NASDAQ as well. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I gotta take my daughter to uh, basketball practice. Hopefully everything is feeling good. She woke up today. She was a little sore. She was a little bit under the weather. By 12 o'clock, I wish all of us had this energy. 12 o'clock, she's bouncing off walls. Dad, I'm bored. Let's go shoot, you know, shoot around um, in the driveway. So again, God bless for kids. Guys, good night, everybody. God bless. Have an awesome, awesome Friday. And I'll see some of you guys tomorrow. And I'll see the rest of you guys on the weekend update. God bless. Have a good night.